I find myself at a weird point in my toy collecting life. Obviously, I still love my toys. You know, it is literally my job, both here on YouTube and out in the real world. However, I'm, I'm hitting a point where I'm starting to appreciate things in different ways than just simply just breaking it open and playing with it, which leads me to this realization that there is part of me that's actually becoming comfortable with being an MISB collector, which is weird to me because like my, my viewpoint has always been and still always is a toy is meant to be played with. A toy is meant to be enjoyed rather than like seen as an investment. But I'm starting to see things a little bit differently now. Uh, now that a lot of the things that I grew up with are really hard to come by now. So I'm going to get into it a little bit and show you some examples of what I mean by this. So as always, if you like what I'm doing here, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Helps me a lot and is very quick to do. And if you're so inclined, a buck or two in Patreon helps me out a lot too. So, I realized this about a, well, let's not say a year ago. Maybe let's give it like six months. It was when we, is when the toy store that I now manage first opened before I worked there. Remember the video I did uh, last year? Uh, that video, um, showed off a whole bunch of stuff that I now, ironically, own myself. And I own the exact ones in that video for various reasons. And the things I showed off, the first thing, the big things I bought were these. I bought Mint On Card Original Beast Wars toys. I bought a stack of them. Uh, I got, like, I got Polar Claw, I got Man Terror, I got, uh, who else did I get? Look it up there. Um, I got Cyber Shark. You know, I got Beast Wars toys I never actually played with. You know, and this was a big one. I'm a big turtle guy, so why did I never own the Turtle Transformer in Beast Wars? So I bought them with the intention of opening them up. You know, they're expensive, but I figure it's worth it to experience what they felt like in 1996. You know, because you don't, you get really get to experience that every day. But here it's been a year. It's been over a year since I bought them. And they're still unopened. I still have not broken them up. I thought at some point I was going to do a video of like to celebrate Beast Wars 25th anniversary. Let's break open some vintage Beast Wars toys. And I could never bring myself to do it. In fact, it's continuing. As of this video, I am currently waiting for an eBay auction I won for a Noctoro and a uh, Terragator mint on sealed card. And I don't know if I'm even going to open them or not. Snapper and Terragator, the two turtle transformers in Beast Wars, two I've always wanted to play with. And I don't think I'm going to open them when I finally own them both. I'd like to get one loose, but they're so expensive when they're complete loose, I've never actually bit the bullet on it. And it's continuing. So here's Scream. I got this on my last toy hunt on the on the west coast of Florida, or the east coast of Florida, rather. And I don't think, you know, it's it, obviously I haven't opened it yet. Now, it's not like I have, like, a huge desire to open Transmetal 2 Scream. You know, I think it's a novelty more than anything. But... Again, it's adding to what has become a modest, you know, Beast Wars unopened collection. You know, I think between that Polar Claw sitting over there, the Scott McNeil autographed Rock Bubble Dinobot, still a very cool thing. I'm looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, yeah, yeah, and even 10 vintage Beast Wars toys. Crazy to me. And... It's gone beyond that. It's gone so much further. Uh, and some of it is, like, precious stuff. You know, like, under understand, like, opening up super rare stuff, that gets a little bit iffy, you know? Like, I have this, because I wanted the Max from Todd McFarlane's Spawn line. This is actually a special version, which comes with more of those little is that he so lovingly pounded in most episodes of the old cartoon. Yeah, I really like the Max. Uh, but I don't have the heart to open this one, not only because it was a gift, uh, but also because 
it's a special version, you know? Uh, so I've just been hanging on to it. And I, again, I don't know if I'm even going to be tempted to open it. Um, see, what else do I have here? Something else that was in those videos. You remember, like, the Primal Rage toys? I was kind of disappointed uh, when I saw those Primal Rage toys at the shop and found out they weren't actually for sale. They're from the owner's personal collection. And he wasn't intending on putting a price tag on them. But he sold the shop. He sold the shop to a new owner who has no such attachments and left those with the shop. And I've been earning them off with my store credit bit by bit to the point where I actually own most of the ones they had. And I think I'm uh, going to give it a couple more months and I'll have at least the main cast from the game. But yeah, like, as you can see, like, here are toys that I never really got to experience. And I really like Primal Rage. I have fond memories of the game. However, they are very hard to come by, very precious, and there'll be a complete set of, at the, at the very least, it's going to be a complete set of the original seven dinos from the game, you know, by the time I'm done, anyway. So do I open it? Probably not. Probably not. You know, and it goes against my tenants, but also, it just feels wrong to do it. And then, and this is, that's just like, the rare stuff. You know, you can understand rare stuff, not wanting to open it. There's things like this. Count Dragon from Mast Rider. I bought this to troll myself, essentially. And I think it's funnier in package. I don't think there's any merit to opening it because it's a 90s action figure. It's going to have basic, basic swivel articulation. You know, muddy, de you know, like muddy kind of rounded off details that aren't really, you know, terribly accurate. It's just, you know, it's just a novelty. And it's a bigger novelty when I can actually see that Mast Rider logo or flip it around and see all the different ones they had. There's the Robo Rider, or what I know as Robo Rider, but Mast Rider's super gold. Notice there's no super blue on here, though. So... That one, at least, you know, that's funny to keep in box, right? Right. And what about something like this? Behold, Dash Rendar. Well, what? You never heard of Dash Rendar? Play, play a classic once in a while. Han Solo wishes he could be Dash Rendar. This, this was my guy. This was the Hero of Shadows of the Empire, which was a big media event they did between the movies when there were no new movies coming out. This had novels, comic books, and it was a launch title for the N64. They went all out. If they couldn't produce a movie, they were going to produce literally everything else, and there is your starring character. Loved Dash Rendar. Loved this toy as a kid. You can get one of these for like 15 bucks. You know, for a Power of the Force figure, that's a little bit, that's a little bit on the high end for a Power of the Force figure, honestly, but that's still fine. That's still not a big deal. I haven't taken it out. I don't even know why myself. There's just something about it that appeals to me that way. Like going through some of the other things. I bought these. I bought these reissue Ninja Turtles. Uh, and I was like thoroughly disappointed when I found out that they're doing another batch of reissues that actually have more accurate cards than these. Which feel, makes it feel like I was bait and switched into buying inferior reissues. But I didn't buy them to display them. I bought them because I wanted to experience those old toys that I haven't played with since I was a kid. And a lot of them that I never got to experience as a kid. I never had Shredder. Just I just as a kid, I never got around to him. Never had Splinter. Um, I don't even think I had like a normal foot soldier. My the only foot soldier I had was the uh, from the mutating line, the one that like you know like you can transform to show battle damage so I really wanted to try to play around with these but I just I put them on a wall and they looked really nice on the wall so I just kind of left them there and I kind of like one I've been collecting the Super 7 figures which has been scratching that itch uh, because they are the same style as the original toys and then Honestly, it doesn't look like they did a very good job on these. You know, Raph's got 
some paint chips already on his shoulder pad where uh, it's marked off. You can see a little bit on his mask as well where the he wasn't properly painted. And I don't know if you can tell on the webcam, he's really pale compared to like the original coloring of the toy. Like He looks sick. <laughs> he, he looks like he's got leprosy or something. He's not in the, the best Raphael I've ever seen, you know? So that 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 may that also made me go maybe I should leave those sealed, and part of me is thinking maybe I should just resell them. Uh, there's some that have to stay on the card because they work better there. So here is, you know, Jason David Frank himself, the Green Ranger, had it as a kid, wanted it again. Uh, this one stays in the box because it's not too hard. Is is it's you know it's kind of hard to tell from this box from just looking at it like this, but this is pretty badly sun damaged. The, the blue on that side of the card shouldn't be blue, should be green. And you can see down there, you can see where this was left in the light on its side somewhere. It's basically, it looks like it was stacked up on top, like the figures were stacked up in a pile and just that side was exposed to the sun. Best guess by my own uh, experience and interpretations. But yeah, that's another one where, like, yeah, I have no inclination of taking it out of the package. That kind of falls into the Master Rider, the Dragon thing, where I feel like it's a better novelty having it in the box, because having it out would just be disappointing. So, when I went on my road trip to the East Coast, this was my low-key goal, hoping to find a store that actually had my Batman that was my Batman toy as a kid. Air Attack Batman. In the camo, which was at the time, as a kid, the closest I could find to just having normal Batman colors. And what was so cool about this was the armor with, you know, the guns on top and the missiles that dropped down. Uh, so, Batman refuses to use a gun, but has absolutely no problem with laser cannons on his flight pack with droppable bombs. Funny how that works, isn't it? But again, this is one where like, I really wanted to recapture a toy that I haven't played with since I was a little kid, and now I have it in hand, and I obviously have not opened it yet. And even not in something like this, I'm actually kind of wondering why. Because, like, there's nothing about me. Like, I didn't pay too much for this. So there isn't anything in my head going, you know, it's too valuable to open. So why haven't I opened it? Aside from the fact that the flight pack is made of gold plastic and I'm scared to death of anything happening to it. Uh, again. It's been interesting to me, just kind of watching my headspace develop, where there's something novel to me about keeping them like this rather than having them out like those because this is a much rarer way of finding them and also because you know it's something I'm never I'm not going to see again you know how often am I going to find my childhood batman still on the card I'm not you know how often am I going to find that spawn or the primal rage toys you know how often Okay, I'm okay. Skyrim, I'm probably gonna find more than once. Okay, okay. Admittedly, the store I bought this from, I intend to go back to, and they had like four more of these things. <laughs> like that one's not a that one's not an issue. But still, the more I think about it, the more I realize I'm starting to appreciate seeing things in the best form they can be, and I'm starting to appreciate the the nostalgia hit of seeing them on card the way I first saw them when I walked into a toy store and saw them up on the racks for the first time. I think that's what it is for me, is, you know, I could open up those Beast Wars toys and get a cool, like, play experience out of them, but it doesn't quite compare to me right now, compared to seeing them on card and realizing, like, I would have to live in the 90s all over again in order to see that many sealed Beast Wars toys all in one spot. Or I'd have to go to some ludicrous comic book shop or toy store that has just a disgusting amount of that kind of thing. You know, one or the other. Uh, there are some out there, 
In fact, there's one in Orlando. And if I had the chance to drive up there, it's a three and a half hour drive there, three and a half hour drive back. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I drive a Mini Cooper. I'm not putting seven hours of driving on it just to go look at Beast Wars toys. But the point stands. It's just... It's an it's an interesting it's an interesting way of having fun with toys that is purely psychologically driven. It's not about the money, it's about just the visual. It's about appreciating it in its original form. It's about the memories that come back of exploring through the toy aisles and finding these toys for the first time. You know, it's you know, seeing them the way I never got to see them, which is on card. All that. And it's bizarre, because I have no qualms opening up, you know, brand new kingdom or like, you know, upcoming legacy figures. I'm not going to hoard toys in their boxes. I'm going to take them out and play with them because, hey, that's still fun to do. But when I'm going, when I'm going backward, it's harder and harder for me to find reason to open them up, not because of value, but because it just feels wrong. Something in me feels wrong. Opening up something that survived so, so long and avoided being ripped up by a kid or thrown on a shelf to collect dust by a collector like me. You know, some for some reason, it managed to survive. And there's part of me that wants to let it survive a little bit longer. And it's an interesting way for my head to go. No, I am not turning into an M MISB collector. I will still, you know, 99 times out of 100, if I buy a toy, I'm opening it. But I'm learning that there are exceptions to that. And I am learning that that's not a bad thing. Because sometimes it's not just about how much it's going to be worth, it's how much joy that it's going to bring you. You know, if I open up, if I open up Skareem and I play with him once, he's going to go into a bin and be forgotten about until it's time for an eBay sale. If I leave him on card, you know, I get to see a Transmetal 2 on card all the time. You know, I get to appreciate it more as like a creative, you know, a creative creation than I do just a plaything that's going to distract me for what, 10 minutes at best? You know, even if I do a review of it, okay, okay, so maybe I get, like, a full 30 minutes out of it. I feel like, I feel like it's worth more to the universe, just like that. You know, not because it's going to be money, but just because, how often do you see it? So that's where my head is. Um, let me know in the comments below. Is there Are there exceptions to your rules? Are there toys that you don't want to open or you would not open? Whether it is because of its expense, rarity, etc. Or just because of something else. I'm actually curious to see how many others kind of go through that same mental process. Or, or just tell me how much you love ripping open things that, you know, regardless of how valuable it is. That's completely valid too. Genuinely curious about where the line falls. So... That's me for today. Thank you for joining me once again, and hopefully I will see you for tomorrow's video. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.